I really enjoy this movie, but I come from a biased place, okay? So that's why I wanted you guys to see Watch List very quickly, the story about a, you know, a husband and wife, they have three kids. They, they're, uh, they're, on, they're put on this drug list. The husband dies. He's due to a frame drop at night. The, the wife and the mother of the three kids, she goes on a trek to find her husband's killers. She ends up with, she ends up in the dark underbelly, crime underbelly of the Philippines. And she ends up being an informant or a collaborator with the police force, hoping to find justice for her husband. And what happens is she finds other things out and she'll do anything it takes to, to help her family survive to the next day. My initial review was I really loved it. I loved the ending of this movie. I like the fact that just on a superficial level, movie watchers, Bruce, you were saying about allow Filipino cinema is not even on the map here in the States. It's great to see, I think, just what a part of the Philippines looks like for cinephiles. So it's on a world cinema level, I think it's a value added. I thought the movie was a little bit a higher, more, better than your average drug thriller, crime thriller. Now, first off, Bruce Perky, want to hear your overall thoughts on watch list. I would agree exactly with what you said. Uh, it is better. Um, what I appreciated about it was that as it went, it went in directions and in ways that I wasn't expecting. And I don't know if would happen in Western cinema because there's a particular dynamic going on in society in that society around um, trying to stamp out the drug culture, specifically under the current, I think it's the current regime still. Yes. This is based on what's actually going on there. Um, and we probably should talk a little bit about what the watch list is and kind of how that occurs um, because that really shapes everything in this movie and all of the main woman, the main, the mother wife's actions are a combination of very little free will and just desperation and kind of being stuck and going further and further down a rabbit hole. I thought it was really excellent. And to me, I got a little bit of shades of almost of like um, a cross between like a gangster movie. And when I say gangster movie, I mean in the sense of when someone gets somehow pulled into the world and can't get out of it. And also like City of God, where you kind of get dropped into um, uh, just a, a kind of living that is, to me, very, very different. And it made it both fascinating and actually actually very human and also very tragic in a lot of ways. So, Bruce, I thought you were not going to like this movie. I am not because I don't trust your opinion, but I thought I, I don't trust my opinion. I thought I was a little bit too high on this movie. I'm glad. So you would give this movie a solid recommend. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. And I would say what your original review of, I would, I would agree with, stick with it. I think that you, I think some people are going to think it's kind of a little bit by the numbers for the first third or so, but it, it definitely takes a twist um, and a turn in the narrative that I thought was like, oh, okay, well, that's different. Well, how is this going to play out? You know, and it was, it was very intriguing, I thought. Very cool. Eric Holmes. Yes. Um, well, first of all, I got really heavy uh, scene nombre and uh, mm. Maria full of grace vibes from this there you one. Go. Mm -hmm. You got the, uh, the just people living their lives and then just the world around them, the muck eventually just drags them into it. Um, and man, <laughs> yeah. dude, this, this movie you want to talk about movies getting dark this movie gets dark um and it's uh i actually just got done watching it shortly before we recorded and the, thankfully i had may here to kind of debase that a little bit but uh yeah it, it, that that movie shook me that it mm -hmm. is uh I, I i wouldn't say i recommend it and the only reason i say that is because this movie gets really heavy and I think a lot of that works a lot because the uh, actors in it, they're not acting. Like, they're acting, but you don't see that. At least I didn't see that on screen. I, it felt like I was watching a uh, documentary with, like, really great access a lot of the time. Um, and that could be a language barrier thing. 
um because i don't speak the language um most foreign foreign language movies that i watch i don't speak the language so uh south korean movies for example i watch a lot of them but all i know about south korean people is what i see in the movies so when i see the actors acting in those movies i'm like oh that's how they talk so maybe someone from south korea might watch it and go oh that acting sucks that acting is great so on and so forth i don't i don't have that bias so i couldn't say one way or another but just watching this i did not uh get the sense that they were acting i i felt that they were real people and real danger and real really really fucked up situations and uh I, a lot of it got me angry um because there's yeah. uh um the uh the uh this police force is kind of what's uh pulling the strings in this one yeah and it's uh much darker in this than it is here uh that we see on the news but it, it says it's the same thing it's like the reason the reason you exist is to help people to protect people and then they do stuff like this it just uh it just made me want to reach through the screen and just choke this shit out of the certain characters in this and um that's so the, the, interesting. The deci- and then the decisions the mom was forced to make and then yes. um and look the the de- decisions she made were te- horrible decisions but at the same time you know she she pushed back i i think as much as she could uh yeah th- this is a fantastic movie i just don't know that i can recommend it because i i would recommend it with caution this movie gets dark and this movie will probably shake you and if you're at all sensitive get ready you're you're in for a ride and it might not be one you'll enjoy air quotes enjoy no i i think that's that's a very very good take because this movie reminds me and of the departed on just mm-hmm. on a visceral superficial level there are moments on the the departed you know it's violent you know it's criminal but it's still, it's still an extra sense. There's a pulpy level to it. And when yeah. stuff goes down, you go, what just happened here? But that's within the milieu of it's a pulp type of drama. When that kind of stuff happens here, like you were saying, Eric, it actually feels like real life. You actually see, you actually, when someone gets hurt or killed, you go, that, that just happened. And that's a credit to the movie. And you know what? I, I'm going to have to agree with you. I, as much as I love this movie, I, I should, I th- Bruce, you agree. You, this movie is a recommend, but with that caveat of the warning, because. Yeah, I suppose. I mean, uh, yes. Okay. For people who are really sensitive to like more harsh, real, real life violence that actually matters. Sure. But in the same sense, I would say that's a reason to watch it. You know yeah. what I'm saying? Yeah. So that's good I guess I would kind of say like, you know, buck up and watch it <laughs> because <laughs> you should. Uh, can I call out something really quick? I would say don't even look at the movie poster because some of the movie posters like have stuff in it that tells you that you shouldn't see until you see the movie. Um, and one of the little weird thing, did you see that I sent you that little message about the, the chickens? Yes. I didn't understand the, the message. So I, I ignored you like I usually so, do, Bruce. There is a scene, that's fine. <laughs> I'll make you listen to me. There's a scene in this movie where a person has died and they're at the funeral and you oh. see a, a coffin with a, with a glass top so they can view the body, but it's sealed. And there's chickens, little chicks, baby chicks, pecking at seeds on the top of the coffin. Okay. And I, I paused the movie right then and I searched. I said, Philippines, chickens on coffins. And apparently... It's not super common, but it is an actual thing, is that when someone is killed wrongly, one idea is that you put these little, these chicks on the the surface of the coffin and it will peck and it will, it's like a curse. It will peck and be heard very loudly by the person who's guilty. And it's supposed to basically curse them and, and kind of call them out. So that's a little thing that's in this movie. You just see it and go, what is that? And if you're like in a Westerner, you might just assume like, oh, that's just some weird custom. I don't know. It doesn't mean anything, but it actually has meaning. And I thought that little things like that were so cool. So that, well, that, there's one thing with the, uh, the, I didn't know about that, but the wow. thing that jumped out was I thought it was rice 
and mm-hmm. I'm not a biologist, but I do know that birds and rice don't mix very well. <laughs> so I was yeah. waiting for the chickens to explode. <laughs> <laughs> but, I figured uh, it was just a bird seed or like, you know, some kind of seed they put down there to make. Yeah, well, the, yeah, when I saw it, it looked like rice, I was like, ooh, that's not going to end well. But also the, uh, to your point about like little, little things, like when they're uh, doing the dancing, and mm-hmm. they have the gates up, but they're not, they're, it's not a full gate that you can't get through. They're yeah. like gate partitions and they're separated and you just walk. And I thought maybe it was just like a barrier saying, uh, just, a, you know, like a police line, do not cross sort of thing. Like just don't go past it, but they go in and out as they please. I didn't quite understand what yeah. that was, but yeah, it, it had a bunch of little, had a bunch of little details that um, maybe, maybe uh, the filmmakers are, you know, that's just secondhand nature to them. And they just know that's a thing and they put it in and don't think about it. But like have, having not been, you know, having not grown up in that culture, like I just see that and I was like, oh, that's odd. But then, you know, I just move on. But uh, right. yeah, definitely a bunch of uh, small details that I think kind of helps pull you into that world a lot more and just makes it all the more heartbreaking once everything's added up. All right, watch list. By the way, Bruce, very good job on the the little chicks pecking. I did not. Uh, my eyes glossed over that. That just means I'm gonna turn in my Filipino card. I'm gonna <laughs> give that card right to you, Bruce. You are more of a Filipino. And Eric, the since you mentioned Filipino. rice, <laughs> yes, you are more Filipino than me. And even Eric Holmes is more Filipino than me. Anyways, that does not. That means nothing anyway in the big oh, picture oh, thing. Um, oh, did yes. uh, you said you were gonna explain what the watch list is? Because I I didn't really even pick up on that. So uh, what I understood, and, and Greg can look, tell me too, because he's done more research probably on the movie, but the very beginning of the movie starts with, is it Duterte? I don't know how to say his Duterte, name. Duterte, I think, I believe yeah. it's Duterte. Yeah. With a quote from him, right? And he's basically the actual, I don't know if he's the prime minister or the president. President, yeah, the president. And he's basically has this quote, and this is a real quote, I went and looked it up, where he says something to the effect of, uh, and he's wrong about the number, but he says something like, well, you know, Hitler killed 3 million Jews, which is more than 3 million Jews, but he says something like 3 million Jews. And we have that many uh, drug, e- drug abusers in our country, so we can kill them. Like that's, the, that's how this movie starts, with that quote from him. And then the watch list is, it's basically like, uh, like a blacklist, right? They go around the neighborhoods and they essentially, or almost like a witch, like witch hunt too, where they go around the neighborhood and they just, they're going to find the druggies because there's probably a quota they're supposed to meet. It doesn't say that, but they basically, you know, the, we see our main characters get on this watch list, which is you're admitting to being a drug user or pusher or whatever it is. You sign your name. And once you sign your name, you're on that list and essentially you're marked. Yeah. And once you're marked as a drug user, who knows what'll happen to you? We're going to reform you in quotes, but as this movie shows, that isn't necessarily the way those things go. Yeah, and if you're not reformed and you're accidentally killed, but you're on the list, well, you're just oh, another well. number. Yeah. And so, you're an example to not do this to other people, as we yeah. see. Yeah. Yeah, that is very hard. Yep. Watch list now out in virtual theaters. Comes out on demand September 1st. Listeners, watch list really won't be high on the watch list stateside because it's not getting a big media run, but... I think from all three of us, we we both really recommend Watchlist. It's a very hard hitting movie. I think Eric Holmes. I understand that that Bruce Perky says buck up whenever he says buck up. I I don't know what to say because we should buck up, but I'm a coward. So I understand if you listeners don't want to see Watchlist because Eric Holmes had some good advice. There's a reason that maybe you might not want to see it, but there's I, a. I, I should probably amend that. Not don't see it. Just be prepared. We'll, pre- we'll say that. Be prepared. Be, be prepared. This gets, this gets heavy. This gets dark. Just know that's coming. 